spikes is one plant in one pot. With just these materials, the grower can create a personal vision of nature. This is bonsai. Traditionally, bonsai are seen as living works of art, capturing the essence of a Japanese view of nature. Recently, more young people and women have taken up bonsai as a relaxing pastime. On this edition of Japanology Plus, our theme is bonsai. We'll explore why the use of potted plants to create miniature nature scenes has such a wide and deep appeal. Hello and welcome to Japanology Plus. I'm Peter Barakan. I'm in the city of Saitama, just north of Tokyo, at the Omiya Bonsai Art Museum. There are over a hundred bonsai plants on display here, giving a good idea of the different types and styles. The museum attracts around 50,000 visitors a year, including a good number of visitors from overseas as well. So let's get started with a look at the role of bonsai in Japan. Since ancient times, the Japanese have tried to recreate natural vistas around them in everyday life. Such examples include gardens and flower arrangements, and bonsai is another embodiment of this impulse. When you look at bonsai, an entire landscape unfolds in your mind's eye. Bonsai are not made, but grown. In the course of tending the plant each day, the grower must imagine its appearance decades in the future. It takes a long time and great patience to transform a small sapling into a vision of a majestic tree. The trunk of this tree gains just a millimeter of thickness each decade. Among the most famous bonsai masterpieces are ones that have been passed down and tended for centuries. This bonsai is known as the third shogun, estimated to be 550 years old. Roughly 400 years ago, it was the treasured possession of the third Tokugawa shogun, bonsai-loving Iemitsu. It is now cared for by Japan's Imperial Household Agency. There are many such examples of bonsai that have been lovingly tended for generations. Origins of bonsai can be found in the 7th century in China. This mural is from the tomb of the son of Empress Wu, who ruled China at that time. A court lady holds a small tray, which contains plants and rocks arranged like a miniature dry garden. This is said to be the origin of bonsai, which spread across China under the name Penjing, or tray landscape. Later, this art evolved in a different direction from Japanese bonsai. The Chinese started integrating Penjing into their gardens. Since larger arrangements had more visual impact, they were sometimes several meters tall. It was roughly 800 years ago that the tray landscape tradition made its way to Japan. In this 14th century painting of an aristocrat's garden, you can clearly see a display of plants and rocks arranged to create a miniature landscape. Bonsai, originally a pastime of the aristocracy and high-ranking samurai, began to spread among the general public about 300 years ago. Up to that time, the trees used in bonsai were traditionally pines, but now a range of other plants came into use as well. On high days and holidays, bonsai markets would often be held, drawing large crowds from the neighborhood. Cultivating a bonsai plant takes time, effort and money. In Japan, bonsai has traditionally been regarded as a hobby for older men.
Go to a bonsai exhibition and you will indeed see groups of elderly gentlemen evaluating specimens carefully. Bonsai fanciers love to show off their carefully tended plants. This social aspect is a big part of bonsai's appeal. So let's meet our guest for today, Mr. Minoru Akiyama, a bonsai artist who's going to share his expertise with us. Thank you very much for being with us on the program today. Now, if you don't mind me saying, uh, when you think of bonsai, the general impression is of elderly gentlemen. And you're certainly not one of those. You're surprisingly young, actually. How old are you? I'm 35. Recently, more and more younger people, people of my generation, have become very interested in bonsai. They're getting into it. Bonsai artist Minoru Akiyama. He moved to Tokyo at age 18 and spent six years training at a bonsai nursery. Then he took over his family's own bonsai garden and began his career as a full-fledged grower. In 2008, at age 29, he won the Prime Minister's Award, the highest honor in the world of bonsai. Three years later, he won it again, establishing himself as one of Japan's foremost bonsai artists. He frequently travels abroad to give lectures promoting the art of bonsai. Other initiatives of his include the creation of experimental bonsai with plants not native to Japan. Bonsai are basically potted plants, but then again they're not, or, or at least they're very different from what most people think of as potted plants. What is the essential difference? Well, basically, potted plants are appreciated for their individual features, their foliage, their fruit, their flowers. It's these individual features that people tend to zero in on. Bonsai, on the other hand, are appreciated as holistic, total works of art. Each one forms an entire landscape. I remember when I first looked at bonsai, to me, I couldn't really understand why people would go to all this trouble of growing a tree in a particular way when you could just go out into nature and appreciate trees growing wild. Interesting question. Of course, we do appreciate trees growing all around us in our daily lives, but we don't really look at them, do we? Hmm. Bonsai brings the tree right up close for you to enjoy. You may get the impression that the tree is being mistreated when they're being trained, but that's what gives the plant character, and it's what generates the artistic qualities of the tree. It's what makes it a bonsai. Mm -hmm. And although they are planted in these pots, which are, well, some are bigger than others, but they're not that big, it's, it's amazing that they live so long. I know some of them live for hundreds of years. Well, that's because when it's planted in the pot, it's taken away from nature in a sense. It has people fussing over it, watering it scrupulously, giving it fertilizer, keeping pests away from it, and basically coddling it in every way possible. That's how these plants live for decades or centuries. It almost sounds like you're talking about somebody caring for a pet. Yes, growers do baby their bonsai. They treat them like pets or their own children. Growing bonsai involves lavishing attention on a single tree. The grower is especially concerned about the shape of the tree. Among the several basic bonsai forms, the most simple is this straight trunk style. By making the trunk narrower as it rises and pruning the upper branches shorter, you can recreate the majesty of a towering tree. In contrast, a tree can be cultivated to droop downward from the pot in a sweeping arc. This represents the gnarled shape of a pine tree clinging to a cliff face, buffeted by the elements. 
another bonsai form has multiple trunks emerging from one root. This is reminiscent of the wooded landscapes that are so common in Japan. An especially striking form is the bonsai with roots wrapped around a stone. This evokes a wild tree with roots wrapped around a large boulder in a ravine or on a rocky coastline. A crucial factor in drawing attention to the tree is the pot, the bon in bonsai. A good match between tree and pot is essential. This bonsai is nicknamed Higurashi. It's in the collection of the Omiya Bonsai Art Museum and is thought to be more than 400 years old. Higurashi means all day long. The idea is that this bonsai is so lovely, you can spend an entire day looking at it. The pot itself is more than 100 years old. It was made from clay found in the Yangtze River in China. The simple, unadorned pot lets the green foliage and ancient wood take center stage and gives a sense of subdued beauty to the bonsai. This is a great example of how important the pot is. We've seen a number of different types of bonsai now, but when you look at them, what is it that you're looking for, as it were? Bonsai are supposed to be natural vignettes, a microcosm. So you start with the mindset of looking at a landscape. Bringing that landscape to life requires small shapes that conjure up an image of something much larger. Mm. And is there, is there a particular way of looking at it? Bonsai have a front side. You should look at them from that side and crouch down so that you're looking up at the bonsai from below. Get down here and look up at it. Actually, it does look rather different, and very different, actually, doesn't it? A bonsai expresses the grower's own view of nature. In the past, bonsai were an essential element of Japanese hospitality. A bonsai is the centerpiece of this room. The bonsai is accompanied by a hanging scroll and a small accessory. Together, they give a sense of the season and tell a story. This arrangement has the theme of nighttime in Kyoto. The bonsai represents a pine tree standing in a temple garden. The pine is complemented by a scroll painting of the moon and a small model of a pagoda. This was how the Japanese of past eras created an atmosphere that would please and welcome their guests. In order to create these miniature landscapes, bonsai plants are grown using various techniques that have been developed over centuries. Many bonsai have forms that are extremely rare in nature. How do growers coax plants into these shapes? Here, wire is being used to train plants. Wire is wrapped around the trunk and the branches when the tree is young to train it into the desired form. As the tree grows, the wire is adjusted again and again, gradually setting the shape. One thing that must be done in the course of raising a bonsai is replanting. If a tree is left in the same pot too long, its roots will rot. Once the tree is unpotted, twisted roots are untangled carefully to avoid damaging them. Old soil is shaken off and rotten roots are removed. Special soil is laid in the bottom of the new pot before the tree is placed inside it. A 
grower replanting a bonsai always gives it a makeover. For example, by angling the trunk differently, giving it a different front orientation, or using a different style of pot. These are all ways of transforming the same plant into a new work of art. The last step is watering the repotted bonsai. The rule of thumb is to replant every two or three years. That keeps the plant strong and healthy. The superlative techniques of master growers created this pine, which is over 300 years old. One outstanding feature of the tree is the smooth white sections of trunk. The goal was to create a contrast to the rest of the trunk, which is quite rugged looking. The whitened parts are where the trunk has rotted away inside. Effective use of such natural features is a measure of a bonsai grower's skill. To make a bonsai like this, first the bonsai grower looks for a tree with outstanding shape but a partially rotting trunk. Then the rotted portions are carefully sanded off. To prevent the rot from spreading further and to protect the tree from pests, a sulfur solution is applied. The finished bonsai is meant to represent the way wild trees are shaped by their harsh battle for survival. In 1970, Osaka hosted a World's Fair. Among the exhibitions showcasing traditional Japanese culture, there was one on bonsai. It generated new awareness and interest in bonsai around the world. In Europe especially, bonsai made a big splash. Shops selling bonsai imported from Japan appeared and bonsai academies were established, further boosting the art's popularity. Today, Japanese bonsai exports are growing, with China, Vietnam and Europe among the main markets. And at the same time, more people from abroad are coming to Japan to study bonsai. We're about to meet one foreigner who's studying bonsai in Saitama. Oh, look at the size of that collection. Hello, sorry to step in here while you're Hello. at work. That's OK. <laughs> what are you up to right now? Uh, right now, I'm cleaning the, the dead leaves, off, or dead pines, off of this tree. Uh -huh. And um, so sometimes the branches are a little too long, so I'll cut the, the long branches off as well. OK. Yeah. How long have you been doing this? Uh, I've been. Working here for two years. Uh huh. Yeah. Did you actually know of bonsai when, before you came to Japan? Yeah, yeah, I knew of bonsai back in America. I think most Americans are familiar with the idea of bonsai that mm -hmm. they exist. What gives you the most trouble when you're working with bonsai? Uh, for me, I think the most difficult part of uh, growing bonsai is watering the bonsai. Uh huh. What, know, knowing how much or how little. Yeah, you get. because each tree is, is different. Mm. So some trees are have a lot of energy. Some trees are a, a little tired. Mm. Um, so the weather is a factor. The soil is a factor. So there are, if you have a tree at home, like a potted plant or something, it's you know it just keep it alive. Mm -hmm. But with bonsai, we have to try and keep these trees as healthy and in the best condition possible. So mm. it's it's. Uh, very complicated mm. to do it correctly mm -hmm. with water. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm Matt Alt, and today I'm lost in the world of the Mambonsai, which they tell me is taking Japan's youth by storm. Now, I'm here with the pioneer who created this genre of bonsai some 27 years ago, Mr. Paradise Yamamoto. Konnichiwa. Nice to meet you. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, what is a mam bonsai? Tell me about this. It looks like a regular bonsai, but it's got a man or two. Miniature figures. Little figures? Yes. There's kind of a story element to it, too. It should tell an exciting story. That's man bonsai. 
I see that apparently the mon in mon bonsai isn't just for humans, but also for orangutans. So, That's right. Animals are no problem. Try pulling on that. Like this? Right. Oh, a little action so. gimmick. Adding little gimmicks like that makes it even more fun. Bouncing baby orangutan. I see. Well, now I'm just itching to try this myself. You want to try it? Can I? Yeah. Can you show me? Oh, of course. Let's do it. So, what are we doing? There's a critical element in man bonsai, something you need to have on hand. Actually, they must be around here. Here it is. This? Moss? That's right. And now, what I'm going to do is... Oh, look at all your tools there. We'll use these. Okay. It's a spatula for food, right? I don't think we want to eat this, though. Nobody gets angry if you gather this stuff. In fact, they'll thank you for cleaning up the streets. Well, it's very fresh and green looking, that's for sure. It sure is. Want to give it a try? Okay, let me give it a try. Oh, fresh moss. It's hey, hey, don't eat it. Don't eat it. <laughs> don't worry, I won't. Well, you can't beat the cost. It's free. Exactly. It's free. That's one great reason to do man bonsai. Wow, look at all this stuff. So I don't even, where do we begin? The positioning is important. You want it a little bit off-center. That makes it easier to place the figures. I see. What's next? Next is this. Ah, the moss. Oh, wow. Wow. This is great. So this is basically a regular bonsai. Right, OK. And now, the secret ingredient. Here it is. Go for it. You can express what's happening in your head. Or you might want to express a dramatic moment in a story with a beginning, middle, and end. So the kind of the middle of the storyline. Yes. So that moment. We want to capture that moment. Just before the story reaches its climax. OK. Mm. So choose your figures with that in mind. This represents about what's going on inside my head about 90% of the time. <laughs> nice work. Wow. So the drama's complete. What next? You have to get the size of the tree just right. Ah! Uh, oh! oh. Ah, but you know, it's interesting. It, it looks totally different now. No, it's just right. Right. All done. Now, a man bonsai needs a title. A title? So. When you hear the title of a man bonsai piece, it should make you chuckle, make you smile. Actually, the title really makes or breaks a man bonsai. Here's one. I need me some of them long trimming shears. Should have clipped that one sooner. I call this Matt versus the giant salamander. Coming soon to a theater near you. Perfect. See you next week. The stereotype of bonsai as a hobby for old men is being challenged. This is a bonsai class in Tokyo that caters specifically to beginners. Here, you don't train the plants with wire, and you don't have to use just a single plant. It's closer to planting an ordinary tree, and it makes the art of bonsai more accessible. The plants are chosen for their resilience to dryness and disease. And they're all mini-sized. They have a petite charm that appeals to many women. <laughs> I'm really fond of my plant. It's so lovable. 
class offers an easy way to create a bonsai, then watch it flower, fruit and grow over the years. I put it on my table and look at it during meals or having a drink. I find it soothing and also invigorating. More people of all ages are embracing bonsai growing as a fun and relaxing pastime. Do you have any particular projects to try and appeal to young people with bonsai? Right now I'm working on olive tree bonsai. As you probably know, olive trees are often used in gardening. They're well suited to bonsai. They're very tough. Lots of people in Japan have their bonsai indoors. That kind of dry atmosphere is great for olives, and you can enjoy them through the year, seeing the fruit ripen and so on. That's why I chose the olive tree. Do you see any uh, long-term potential for growth and popularity for bonsai, both in Japan and around the world? I see great potential. There really are a lot of bonsai exhibitions these days. They offer great opportunities to appreciate bonsai. Also, bonsai growers, including myself, have a lot of chances to go abroad. We hold demonstrations and teach classes. I hope to see many more young people, more women, and people from around the world enjoying the art of bonsai growing. I think its popularity is increasing. Mm. What you were saying earlier on about bonsai being like pets, I, I found very interesting. It's perhaps a good way of seeing them in a way. Also, you were saying that when we're out in nature, we tend not to spend time looking at trees. And that got me thinking about perhaps it might also be a good thing if we did spend more time looking at trees out in nature. At least I felt that I would like to be a little bit more aware of things like that. So uh, it's been good talking to you today from a lot of different standpoints. Thank you very much. Yeah, Thank you very much. Next time, sushi. Originating in Southeast Asia over 2,000 years ago, sushi became uniquely Japanese before conquering the world, and its evolution continues.